After a lackluster performance in game number three, the Leafs are now on the brink of elimination with their season and maybe their futures on the line. Hey everyone, welcome into another Sun Sports Roundtable. Rob Wong joined alongside by Toronto Sun Sports columnist Steve Simmons and Toronto Sun Maple Leafs writer Terry Koshin. And guys, who would have thought the Leafs would find themselves in this position after taking down the Lightning in round number one, but they're now down 3-0 to the Panthers. Steve, the one big story to come out of game three was the performance or lack thereof from the Leafs core four. What do you make of their no-show in a game that was pretty much close to must-win as you can get? Well, I think shocking is the best way to put it. Although, if you look back to, you know, a few years back to the Montreal series and to a Boston series and to Tampa series, late in those series, uh, the Leafs stopped scoring. And now it's five games in a row that they have 10 goals in the last five games. And, and so you're shocked, but it's not like you haven't seen it before. The problem is this. You invested, you, the Maple Leafs, invested $40 million dollars a year in these four players who are point of game players. That means that in playoff time, you should be getting four points a night from the four uh, to get zero goals in three games down three, nothing. And, you know, two of the three games real close. Uh, it, it's unacceptable. And I thought last night, Mitch Marner may have played his worst game as a Maple Leaf. Like he just was completely off. And I don't know if it's nerves. I don't know if it's, the feeling around the room. I don't know what it is. I thought Matthews was okay last night. I thought the others were not okay. Outside of the Nylander uh, play on the Gustafson goal, uh, you know, there was nothing there. And, you know, maybe if Matthews scores on that initial shift, Steve, uh, you know, instead of hitting iron, uh, you know, th does the game change? Hard to say. I mean, you know, they get a goal from Lafferty a few minutes later, and we all know the, how the rest of the game went. The, the thing that I that is mind boggling about the core four is like Steve says, they've been through this so many times and to get to a point now where your past experiences clearly aren't helping. They're clearly not a guiding, they're a guiding force for you. Uh, what does it say about them? You know, the, the fact of the matter is uh, why, why do we expect them to be any better if they haven't been in the past? This could be the best Leafs team period now. And I think what should be frustrating for them is, you know, they're talking about doing good things and, 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 and you know, trying to get offensive chances and that. Well, but they're still one step away. They're not getting blown out by the Panthers here. You lose last night in overtime. You lose by a goal in, uh, in game two back in Toronto. So they're there, but they just can't make that extra final push. And I think you'd think by now, you'd think by now, sorry, they, they would have that in them. But again, this is... Maybe this is exactly what they are, and they are no better than this. We saw Doug Gilmore and Wendell Clark in 93. We saw what great playoff play could be. We've seen yeah. it from Sundin. We've seen it from Gary Roberts. We saw it from Sittler and McDonald years ago. We know in this city, or in this country really, what great playoff play can be. This is not great playoff play, and it hasn't been year after year after year. And really, you have to ask yourself, and I'm sure the Leafs inside are asking the same questions. Can these four guys, when it matters, do what has to be done? We saw it with Gilmore. We saw it with Wendell. Uh, I don't know if they, I don't know if they can. The GM thinks that they can because he stuck with them, and he keeps telling us that. Well, we're about to find out. But do it now, four games in a row. I don't know. Not going to happen. Yeah, it's a tough task ahead for the core four who deservedly are taking a lot of heat in this series. But what do we make of the job of head coach Sheldon Keefe, Terry? Well, I mean, he's getting out coached. He's getting out coached by somebody with more experience and uh, he's been around the National Hockey League for, for decades now. And uh, again, what else would we expect at this point? Uh, you know, Sheldon Keefe has had a good track record uh, in coaching in junior and then with the Toronto Marlies leading the championship Calder Cup five years ago. So what? You know, make the adjustments at the National Hockey League level and show that you can be that person. And we're not seeing that from him right now. You know, did, did he wait too long? Did he wait too long on, on the defense changes? You know, Mark Giordano barely plays last, barely plays last night. Eric Gustafson scores a goal. And I'm not saying Eric Gustafson is next coming to Bobby Orr, but it's a nice goal. He shows that he can jump into the play, um, you know, fresh legs, all that sort of thing. Did that change come too late? Perhaps. But you know, the fact of the matter is he's going up against a coach that has more experience. 
Got by it in the first round against John Cooper, but it's not happening right now with Paul Murray's. Well, the same problems we're seeing right now are problems we saw last year and the year before and the year before that. So to say he's being outcoached by Paul Maurice might be true, but he wasn't being outcoached by Ducharme a few years ago when Montreal when they were playing Montreal and the team came out nervous in game five and nervous in game six and nervous in game seven. And you look at the way they came out for the second period, I think, of game one where they gave up the two goals right away. Um, this team doesn't seem to understand how to start, whether it's start the game, start the period, deal with the kind of things that, that coaches need his, their teams to do. What do you do in the first and last minute of periods? When do you get scored on? You know, when do you give up goals in those circumstances? The Leafs have a history under Keith, not in the regular season, in the playoffs, of not performing to their capabilities. And I have been a Sheldon supporter because I think the team has gotten better and better and better. But it's got to get better when it matters most, and it hasn't done that. Well, look what happens last night too, right, Steve? The Florida is getting outplayed immediately, right? Le- Leafs get those odd man rushes. Lafferty scores on one, like we mentioned. Matthews nearly scores. So it's close to being 2 nothing. So what do they do? You know, wh- whether they make adjustments, maybe that's a bit of a stretch, but they get back to their game. They get back to their hard four check. They give the Leafs too much to think about. They bottle it up. You know, one of them said last night it was how tight it was up there. There's no room to move. Well, then you have to counter that. And the Leafs aren't doing that. And oh, can, now can they're I in mention, a lot of, yeah, a lot I, of trouble. Can I, sorry. Can I mention one player who's not getting, an, I think, enough mention? And that's TJ Brody. Um, on the winning goal last night, TJ Brody has a chance to be with Reinhardt out by the neutral zone. And, and he gives him all kinds of space. Then he, there, he goes behind the net with him, and he takes the wrong side of him. This is a veteran defenseman, a professional, a guy who's been around forever, and he gets absolutely schooled by Reinhardt on the winning goal. He, he I, totally he does. Watch Lafferty and Camp on that play too. No, let, they just look at Reinhardt and say, "Here, take the zone." And then Brody, you know, does what he does. And again, a veteran defenseman, it's just not happening. You know, Jake McCabe. I know it's his first goal in the playoffs, but. That's been a letdown for them, that pair as a whole. And now, you know, you rely on a guy like Giordano during the regular season, did a lot of good things, and he just caught up to him. He just he doesn't have the the the, uh, the gas now, the legs. Played barely seven or eight minutes last night. So there's a lot for them to consider here going into game three, or sorry, game four. I just don't know, you know, you can't make significant changes now. This is what you have, and they're stuck. Yep, well, we'll see what goes down on Wednesday night for game number four. Let us know your thoughts on the Leafs in the comments. For Steve Simmons and Terry Koshan, I'm Rob Wong. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll talk to you next time on another Sun Sports Roundtable.